<laughs> Are you really? I'm looking for the freeway of love. Where is it? <laughs> this is my new severe look. The freeway of love runs right by my house. Oh, that's uh -huh. what all that traffic yeah, is stop. out there. They're all coming in. This is uh, compliments of our, our crack uh, audio man, uh -huh. uh, little Mikey Carroll, you uh -huh. know, the little rotund one in the back. Yeah, uh -huh. And he does sit uh, on the audio on this program. <laughs> I love to do that. Oh, time. it's so wonderful. But he wears these. You're mm -hmm. back there in the darkness in the room right behind us. The people push the buttons and do all the right things most of the time. <laughs> so anyway, I have borrowed these from him. Have nothing whatsoever to do with today's show. You know, there, something terrible has happened. Oh, no. And I, I really hate to tell you about this, but I, I think I'm going to have to. We got a call today from the... I-F-T. Now what's that? The Icelandic Free Terrorist. <laughs> and they're holding Sis and Tutsi captive <laughs> in Reykjavik, Iceland. Oh, not Reykjavik. Yes, that's true. <laughs> they're being held for ransom. <laughs> and we don't have any Icelandic recipes or anything. Oh, no. The only thing we've got left from them this are these recipes stuff. that they sent in from England last week. So we're going to do some English recipes, and Miss Witch said that she would try to determine from our mail oh. uh, what people want to hear about. Okay. But uh, fair for the time being, Sister and Tootsie are going to be spending uh, the next uh, few months, I'm afraid, because I don't think we can come up with that much money that mm. fast. Mm. Uh, Twelve dollars and fifty cents. Icelandic we don't make much terrorists. on this show. <laughs> I, I'm afraid they'll hold them over one of those hot springs up there in Iceland. <laughs> well, what are we going to do today here? Well, they did send in some true English recipes. And uh, so, as you know, mm. you're doing, um, well, you, why don't you tell them what you're doing? Well, it's right bizarre. It's called Toad in the Hole. Toad in the in Hole. In the Hole. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the, they're uh -huh. in the, <laughs> right now they're over uh -huh. there. We, we made them hop into the oven. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm doing bubble and squeak. Beg your pardon? I, I said I'm doing bubble and squeak. Well, I know you do that all the time, but what are you, what's your recipe? Well, bubble and squeak, it, it's a typical English entree. Oh. And then I'm mixing up a little uh, refreshment for us to have as we go through the show called the Oxford Grace Cup that was invented at uh, Oxford, well, let's the famous get on university, a uh, city it's, and uh, town there. It's, it's going to be a fabulous show, so let's, <laughs> let's get on with it. it. And we'll make this uh, delicious Grace cup. I'll take this off so you'll recognize me. And I'm going to have to do it because Grace couldn't come today. Yeah. So we'll start, I am swear I'm about to sneeze, I hope I don't. This Excuse is me, a, I'm watching these uh, toads in the hole back here. That's smelling real good. I don't think it, I still don't believe it takes 40 minutes for those things. I believe they're going to burn up before the show's yeah, over. You watch them real good. Oh, oh well, boy, it should oh be right under I wish I had something to open this thing now, up. Now, is this the, the Mary Oxford? Uh, the Oxford Grace Cup. Oxford Grace Cup. And it would be delicious if we could get the top off of it. Well, it's, <laughs> oh, there it is. A true connoisseur of wine. Blink. Right. Now, you start out with your bowl, and you add to it. Oh, that sounds right serious. <laughs> a bottle of sherry. <laughs> start out with a bowl. That <laughs> takes care of your bottle of sherry. And now you have to have a pint and a half of... Uh, or a pint, yeah, a pint and a half of strong, strong ale. <laughs> now, this I believe is it, I believe bass it. Bass ale. It's what? Bass ale. Oh, I thought it was, you said backwards. No, no. <laughs> That's bass. <laughs> yeah, that goes in there. Listen to him crying back there in the oh, back. Oh, mm -hmm. so what is he doing? He's either ruining a good wine or <laughs> destroying a good beer now, or one or the other. A good pint and a half. Let's see. That is uh, a pint would be 16 ounces and 8 ounces would be 32. How many ounces would that be? One. Uh, no, a, a <laughs> pint would be 16, 32, and uh -huh. take away 8 is 
24, right? Uh, I guess you're. That's, that's right. Print near. <laughs> Three eighths or 24. And that's two of these bottles. There we go. Now we're going to have the, <laughs> the peel of a lemon. And we're just going to put that right down in here. To flavor this. Oh, this is going to be so good. Well, there's a big A on this lemon. <laughs> we'll I told you never to show you big A on television again. <laughs> And but now, it did anyway. Uh huh. And now that, what? Now we got to have the juice off in the lemon. That reminds me. You remember that old Steve Allen bit where he called up the Big A Cleaners one time, California, he told them that he was with a cheerleading group and he wanted to have his Big A clean. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, "Well, how big is it?" It was some outrageous fifty foot by seventy foot A he wanted to bring over. They said, "Well, we can't do it." He said, "Well, you call yourself Big A Cleaners, <laughs> can't even clean a Big A." And the juice of this lemon is going into it. Yeah. And then it's I like, hope this doesn't, <laughs> I just see this flying through the air with the greatest of ease. All right. And we need some nutmeg. This looks a little like that wild uh, uh, champagne uh, punch I mix up every Christmas and that lays I, and people to thunder. And some sugar. Because it's not real sweet, you know, and it catches up with people, old ladies who are real sweet and don't, wouldn't think anything, of, you know, and buy and take a couple of snorts of that stuff, and they're dancing and having a good time. And for reasons, Unknown to me, what you need to float oh, on it? Oh no! Three slices of brown bread. Oh, you're kidding? No, seriously. Do you? <laughs> well, that's the dumbest thing I ever seen. Well, there's no practicality to it. Well, now, what's the practical value of putting bread well, who in knows? a drink? The uh, the the. <laughs> well, you cast your bread upon the booze. That's right. Now let's see how it tastes. <laughs> it looks real vile. <laughs> It looks like something that, uh, well, I just don't know what it looks like. <laughs> Where'd you, where, where did this recipe come this from? This came from England. It really did. This is no joke. This literally came from England. How is it? Oh, it's real interesting, Laban. Ooh, that's real flavorful. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Whoo! Excuse me. Other than that, it was right good. You want me to make mine first? Or you can make your. What are you I doing? I think it'd be a real good idea. I know. I think. <laughs> what you doing there? Well, I'm, I've got an onion that has gotten brown down here in this pan. And why don't you go on and work on your bubble? What you tried to caramelize it? Well, I just wanted to. It's supposed to be golden, and it and well, it, it is. certainly is golden and greasy. <laughs> the two G's. It's going to have some more stuff on. <laughs> golden and greasy. Go ahead. Well, I'm getting be ready my to guess. make a toast. Start your recipe <laughs> in the hole. Read it out He's loud only first. Have a half a cup of this stuff and already is acted up. <laughs> now, first thing you do is you get your oven working. 425. I bet you this bread would be tasty as toast. Oh, you know what? I bet you could take it. I have seen him do this before, and later on he'll wring this bread out. <laughs> like this. Okay, four ounces of flour. That threw me a little bit, that four ounces of flour. I'm not used to those kind of measurements. Well, that's a but that's quarter what to of a do. pound. Yeah, four ounces. Now, this cup is right neat. This cup has the ounces over to the left of, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's liquid. Ounces. Yeah, liquid ounces. And it's about a uh, half cup. Put that in there, like so. And then we're going to take an egg and bracket. Oh no. What's wrong? I have throwed my fork out. <laughs> it probably went out with a. You're supposed to take a fork and mash that, work that stuff in there. Hang on a sec, I'll be right back. All right, here's to you. What? I said, here's to you. <laughs> This, this show would is be disaster. really good to serve at the ladies' club luncheon. <laughs> Not if the ladies have a club. Oh. All right, now, take that and work it in there Ooh. with a fork. Work it around now. Real good. Now, put a little salt in there, too, boys and girls, a little salt. 
I'll tell you, I think what it is is this, uh, the, this three slices of bread just set it off so good. Now we're going to take some milk, about a uh, half cup of milk, <laughs> give or take a gallon. Uh huh. And put that in there. Now, is that the toad or the hole? Well, this is the toad. Well, <laughs> no, this is, this is, we're making, uh, that's a setup question. There's no way I could answer that and not get myself in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I fell right into it. All right, I mix that all up real good. You may want to put just a little bit of water in there, too. It says a half cup of water, also. I guess if that's what it says, that's what I ought to do. It looks to me like it's getting right thin. Mm -hmm. I guess it's supposed to be that. It is a batter that you're making, all right? Don't get it too thin. You can use your brains. If it looks a little too runny, like this it does, then maybe it's not quite right. It's not so much a batter as a, I'm just gonna add a little bit to it. <laughs> Excuse me, let me have a little more of this stuff here. <laughs> mm. Getting hot in here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> got these ovens going and everything. Now, uh -huh. here's what you got to do. You go out and get yourself some of these skinless sausages. Now, I'm not talking Vienna sausages. I'm talking real sausages, skinless sausages. And you can get those little, those little things. Now, what you do is you, what we, what we have here, of course, is what do we call this? A centipede bra? One time that we called a centipede uh -huh. bra on top. It's the hole form. Oh yeah, this is the hole that puts them in. See, so you get yourself that and cut these things in half and lay them in the center, just like you're seeing me do right now. It's no big trick to this doll. And just work those things around like so. And then, as soon as you get finished with the batter, which I'm still stirring because I'm trying to get it thickened up just a little bit. Then what you'll do, all right, now what you do at this point is you take this batter and you put that right over top of, of that, like so. Still a little bit thin, but it'll be all right because this is just a play one anyway. The real one's in the oven, all right? That batter, do that. And then you go take this and put it in the oven, 425 for about 40 minutes or so. All right. Them's the little toads, I assume. <laughs> and that's the hole them's go in. Uh -huh. Now, when they come out, they look like this. Because these are already done. I turned it back on so they wouldn't get cold. Well, you fool, you've almost burned them. <laughs> this is what they look like when they're done. Start like overhead. Look at that. Let me show you this. See, they're real nice and brown. And if you, if you cut them open, you'll see, here it is, the toad, toad in, in the, the, the hole. hole. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. Isn't that pretty? That's nice and hot. That's real nice. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to try one right now. Mmm, that's right good. It's sort of like a popover with a sausage. That's what it is. Built mm -hmm. right into it. Right unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Well, that's all there is to that. Well, now, the bubble and squeak, I've got an onion that has been sliced. Yeah! And I'm going to throw in some slices of cold hot. roast beef on top of it. Woo! That's hot. Put that back in to stay warm. Now, is this a bubble or the squeak this is, part? And listen, you can hear it. Can you hear it down in there bubbling and squeaking? And you put on top of it some Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> Says, oh, Mr. Johnson, you're killing us. <laughs> you're killing us, Johnson. And, and that's where it comes from, the bubble and the squeak. Uh-huh. And I'm going to turn uh -huh. it over here. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt on it. <laughs> Where's the pepper, boy? Just, just a little, Johnson. Where's the pepper? Remember my heart. <laughs> oh, That's swear. like remembering the Alamo. Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember my heart. My heart, my heart, my heart. And just a little bit of pepper.
Okay. And this one is done. That's all there is to it. That's your bubble and squeak. Huh. I'll swanny. Now, why don't we look at the recipes or the ingredients there? Toad in a hole. Four ounces of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, one egg, half a cup of milk, pound of skinless sausages. And you may want to add a little water to that if it gets too thick to thin it down a little. Put that in the oven, 400 at, <laughs> yeah, put that in the oven at 425 for 40 minutes. And that's and, it. And uh, bubble and squeak, you need a few slices of, uh, oh no, that's the, <laughs> I can't read it from here. More? That's the Oxford Grace Cup. You need a bottle of sherry, a pint and a half of strong ale, a lemon, some nutmeg, some brown bread, and sugar to taste. And for the bubble and squeak, a few slices of cold cooked beef, cooked Brussels sprouts, an onion, finely sliced, margarine, salt, and pepper. And that's the recipe for our two English delights, including our popovers. Well, now, is that all there is to this, John? Yeah, bubble and squeak is real easy. The English love roast beef. It's the number one favorite. Well, now, is these little, uh, what's your McCulloch's? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Is that all you do to them? You yep. don't boil them in advance? No, no, they or? were already cooked, yeah. They were pre-cooked. Pre-cooked. Before you put them in there. Yeah. And you add... Well, uh, I missed the whole thing because I was doing other things. Maybe I'll do it over again. Uh, well, you, you can do it in just a minute. This is a typical English leftover. You know, the typical English <laughs> dinner, mm. uh, their favorite dinner would be roast beef, mashed potatoes, yeah. peas, yeah. and strawberry, uh, short, uh, sort of a strawberry uh, shortbread or a black forest cake for dessert. That's the favorite English meal of all time. Okay. Now the shortbread is not sweet, right? Mm -mm. No, the shortbread that uh, they talk about uh, is not what the same sort of thing that a lot of people around here talk about. It's closer to what we actually serve in the, the South. Uh, you remember when you were growing up, did, did uh, Toots ever make a shortbread for you out of biscuit dough? Yeah. And it was it was not a real sweet dough. No, real it was, uh, more of definitely a unsweet, bready sort of uh, dough. And uh, in England, if you ask for shortbread, especially in Scotland where it's the national dessert, it really is a a cookie like thing with very little sugar in it. It's not very sweet, but it's delicious. Hmm. And uh, bubble and squeak is just a typical kind of English uh, dinner. The English are not noted for fine cuisine. Oh, you're just bound to raise no, the shackles. Classical English cooking is not known for its, for the, its, the complexity of stuff like you'd find in uh, France, for instance. But it's very good. I English lair. Now I really do want to is, know why that bread's in there. Uh, because it, it does give a, a flavor and a body after it's soaked in it for a while. Oh, okay. To the Oxford Grace Cup, uh, American bread doesn't do that sort of thing because our bread, bread is pretty. Flat. I'll get it out in a minute. This is uh, I use pumpernickel today, and it's uh, it does give a, a definite flavor to it. Now, what were you going to tell is, us about well, that? I was just going to say this is another typical British uh, punch. Uh, the, uh, you find lots of punches in Great Britain. They they love punch. Uh, planters punch, for instance, mm -hmm. is something that we think about from Jamaica or Haiti or some of the uh, islands down in the Caribbean. But this is. Uh, a typical English punch, and you find lots of them. You can go in the grocery stores in England and find punch mixes of all different kinds. Some of them are lethal. Some are, are just real nice. This one is, is really genuinely a nice punch. This one is semi-lethal. Uh-huh. It does have an interesting, uh, it, it, it has a very, I think it's the, probably the English beer. Yeah. Or whatever. The ale. The ale that gives it its, its very particular taste. It's hard to find yeah. ale in the United States. Uh, a lot of the uh, companies that make ale uh, are no longer in business or have retrenched a great bit. I think probably you remember uh, from your childhood, me too, 
that one of the early sponsors on commercial television in this country was Ballantine Ale. Mm -hmm. And Ballantine's is no longer available in a lot of areas in the country. It's still manufactured, but it's got a different formulation. Uh, the English uh, like a real strong, strong flavor, hmm. and that's not real popular in this country where we're used to having light beers that well, now, don't really have a lot of flavor. How do you propose to present this dish? Right on a plate. Oh, you just take you mm -hmm. just take it right out of the skillet sure. and put it over on the. In other words, you don't make some lovely presentation of it. That's right. Hmm. Well, I want to have another. Uh, well, well, it's not a very pretty dish, but I guess. Uh, well, I, I guess pretty is as pretty does. It's all in the eyes of the beholder. I will fill up my uh, Oxford as you can Grace see, Cup it's one not more a pretty, time. Pretty picture. And uh, I'll fill up yours. And where is uh, Miss Witch? Well, I don't know. She was over the airport she was while sorting, ago. She was sorting out. Let's see if she that. She was taken on a 747 Ooh. and Colonel Momar got me this time. <laughs> Oh. Come here. I believe Gaddafi tried to Thank shoot her you. down earlier today. I'm sick of that broom and mow. Oh, you mean Mumar. Mumar Gaddafi. <laughs> Get out of here, witch. <laughs> oh, we got another minute. And Come his on. brother Delmar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's play with the witch some more. Hey, it's a lot Get, of fun. Get that witch All out right, of here. All right, that's enough. <laughs> She's perched on my hair. Uh -huh. Made a nest up there. <laughs> uh -huh. And she left her, uh, oh, she did it up there. Oh, well, anyway. about that? Anyway, what you got? Hey, guys. Yeah. Heard you were going to do some shows on how to cook. Well, we had uh, talked about that. Yes, we had. My wife is so dumb she can't boil water. What can you do for her? And it's signed Spanky LaRue. Spanky LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spank. I swear to goodness. If your wife is that dumb, how do you know she can get to the TV? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's real sad. We're going we're gonna to boil water next week. And what? show you some things. No, well, it doesn't sound know. like a very exciting program. Well, I don't know. You know, we get a lot of mail. Got a ton of mail. I don't think I'd watch. Oh, you probably wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he has trouble putting the water into the pan, much less spoiling. No, hey, nice. we get loads of mail from people all over the country, and we get a lot of a lot of people that write in and say, "My child really likes to watch your show." But I don't know what to do with the child in the kitchen. And usually, you know, mothers in the kitchen or fathers that are doing the cooking would like to tie the child up to the kitchen chair and not <laughs> let them help at all. Hmm. We also get lots of mail from um, college students that are just starting out in the kitchen that have never been allowed to do anything. Hmm. And we're also getting mail from older people that have quit cooking years ago. So uh, I think for the next few shows... Why is that? Is their ovens gone out? No, they've just given up. It's oh. easier to go to the cafeteria. So we're going to do a refresher course well, Why don't for we you, just go to the cafeteria? And we're going to teach the little kids and the college students how to cook. And next week, we'll start with boiling water. Or maybe you should just <laughs> skip the show and go to the cafeteria. Oh, that sounds fun, too. I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, where is the... It's time to get the toad out of the hole. <laughs> I'm going to take this uh, <laughs> bubble and squeak over here. I believe these things have been in here so long they've calcified. They are right lovely, though, if you'll notice, about the same color as my hair. All right. I guess we'll have to find something to put it on. Well, you can just take one out and put it on my plate. These do well, but I've got to set that down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to set it on that fine... Uh, <laughs> table that we have. Our melamine, Our melamine <laughs> table. table. Top. Well, getting these things out of here seems to be somewhat of a... There we go. It, when they come out, they come out real lovely. Look at that. You can see the little toad on the uh, bottom. Oh, that's... Here, a, let me give you two of them. Is that the toad tail? That's the toad tail. <laughs> now, you can make these as thick as you want to. Oh, my God. Look, what? <laughs> look at the top of that toad tail. But, you know, these little sausages, now, these are real nice. These are a little... Uh, look at that. <laughs> These are a little... This uh, one gave his life for this <laughs> popover. Oh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. He's interrupted <laughs> me 15 times, and I can't remember what it was I was going to tell you, so let's just get on with it. Mm. Well, let me try this. Well, seems to be right tough and slippery. Mmm. Good combination of flavors. I like that. Nice. Now, the toad in the hole is real good. Is it really, or mm -hmm. are you just being polite? Well, I don't know. I guess it's all right. After this, <laughs> Grace, let me have another. Grace. Mm. Well, 
it's an interesting meal. It's, you know, I wouldn't go way out of my way for it, but. Well, when you're hungry, you'll eat. That's right. <laughs> it is right good. <laughs> they are right amusing because you could also, while you're doing these, you could run up a little Cracker Jack prize and sneak in there. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Anyway, some dumb dumb will probably try it. Mm -hmm. You see that? It's right in there. And it's good. It's a nice little surprise. Yes, it is. It really is. I guess we'll have these at your next party. Oh, yeah. Your toad party. These will be my finger sandwiches. Mm hmm Well, we got to get out of here. The Seems old clock on the wall keeps running. Just, just been creaking along. It's, it's time to go finally. Goodbye. If you're a fan of cooking cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.